Hello, everybody. Good early morning, 2.21 a.m. from Iowa. Uh, thank you for stopping in. Hit the like button, subscribe, or just come to visit. It's okay with me. Um, this article here I'm not happy about. Biden is cutting Medicare benefits through Inflation Reduction Act. And this was published on November 24th of 2022. Two economics have published an op-ed revealing that President Joe Biden's so-called Infla Inflation Reduction Act will cut Medicare benefits, especially cutting payments for prescription drugs for seniors. Biden and the Democrats claimed throughout the midterm election season that Republicans wanted to eliminate Social Security and Medicare, citing Senator Rick Scott, Republican of Florida, desire to reorthanize, authorize, reauthorize all federal spending at regular intervals as evidence for their claims. Meanwhile, it appears that it was actually the Democrats that passed the legislation to cut Medicare. The Inflammation Reduction Act. The SOB had the nerve to go on a national campaign shouting that Republicans were going to cut Social Security and Medicare. As it turns out, it's Biden cutting Medicare. Well, he don't have to worry about it, does he? No. He's got piles. Uh, that's money, of course. <laughs> the Wall Street Journal op-ed Casey B. Mulligan and Thomas J. Philipson, Philipson report that the legislation that has been celebrated by Biden and the Democrats for its supposedly positive impacts will actually have serious consequences for seniors in the near future. President Biden has accused Republicans of scheming to cut Medicare. In fact, it is his signature legislation, the Inflation Reduction Act, that will lead to benefit cuts and premium increases for seniors, the economist asserted. Medicare's popular drug coverage program is headed for a painful amputation. Mulligan and Philipson goes on to describe the basics of Medicare's prescription drug program and the cuts to Medicare Hyden in Biden's 750-page bill. Now, I know he didn't write that. Somebody wrote it. Somebody else wrote it. He didn't write that 750-page bill. <laughs> The private plans participating in Medicare's prescription drug program, known as Part D, currently draw, draw on three sources of revenue to finance prescriptions, out-of-the-pocket payments from patients, premium payments uh, made by plan members, and subsidies from the federal government, the op-ed reads. In 2025, under the Inflation Reduction Act, That'll be, that'll be the end of his reign if he stays as president, hopefully. Under the Inflation Reduction Act, I had to stop and think that. <laughs> I'm getting tired, I guess. <laughs> I can't deduct 22 or 23 from 25. Oh, Lord have mercy. I tell you what, I don't know. All right, in 2025, under the Inflation Reduction Act, both government subsidies and out-of-pocket payments by patients are scheduled to be cut sharply, the op-ed continues. The difference will have to be made up by the premiums. But the statue in half, if you hear something, that's my uh, kitty, boo-boo, digging in his box. Pretty soon he'll lay down and go to sleep, I hope. But that's him in his box. Mm. 
Uh, where was I? But the statue inhabitants is third uh, revenue source, which is also subsidized from increasing more than 6%. That's hardly enough to cover inflation, let alone compensate for the other two revenue losses. We estimate the beginning in 2025 planned subsidies, specifically the reinsurance reinsurance subsidies for the beneficiaries with the most drug spending will be cut $30 billion out of revenue that currently totals about $110 billion, the economist added. With $30 billion less to finance prescription benefits, something will have to give. Plans currently have far too little profit to span the chasm that the Inflation Reduction Act opens between expenses and revenue. Biden has claimed on numerous occasions to want to protect programs like Medicare, but it appears that this was not the case. There never is a case with him, is there? Lie, 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 lie. wonder how he sleeps at night. He must take meds. This isn't the first time that he has signed a measure that directly contradicted his public position. Biden previously said that he wanted to cut the cost of prescription drugs such as insulin, but in his first week in office he canceled an executive order signed by former President Donald Trump to lower the prices of both insulin and epinephrine. I can't pronounce that. E P I N E, infranim. No. P H R I N E. Epinephrine. Friend. <laughs> well, I'm close anyway, but um, that's got uh, something to do with diabetes there. I will look that up. I need to know what that is. My daughter could probably tell me. Yeah, Biden's Inflation Reduction Act has been under the fire for some time, most notably because many economists, economists have stated that it would actually have little or n to no impact on inflation. Others have criticized the bill for being filled with tons of left-wing spending policies that have nothing to do with the bill's stated purpose. The criticism was only exhibited yeah, by the media and Democrats calling the bill a climate and health care package on numerous occasions. I'll tell you what, I just don't know. I really can't tell when he tells the truth or when Biden lies. And I don't think Biden has ever told the truth except for spending money. Yeah, boy, he's all through there. Oh, just send them a billion dollars. Send them our weaponry. Send them our tanks. Yeah, we're going to help them out. What about us? He could care less about us. Yep. What a shame. What a shame. Sad, isn't it? President of the United States. He's supposed to care for the people. Boo-boo. Boo-boo. No. That is a no-no. No, baby. You can't do that. Well, you want up here on cam? Mommy's on cam. Well, get up here real quick. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Now you got to turn around. Here, turn around. Oh, sit tight. Wait a minute. I got to get you up there. Just a minute, boo boo. Just a minute. I want you in the cam. Just a minute. That's the baby. He is huge. And he's just over a year old. That's Boo Boo. Alright. That is Boo Boo Baby, aren't ya? Yes, he's a Boo Boo Baby. Oh, he can't even fit on my lap, he's so big. And he's just over a little year old, aren't ya? 
Yes, you just be good boy now, okay? You just about got in trouble, didn't you? Yes, you jumped on Chrissy. You could hurt Chrissy doing that when you're playing. You play too rough. Yes, you play too rough. All right, let me get on with this now. I think this will probably be my last video also. And this is Ron DeSantis. And you know how I, I like him. I like Ron. I really do. No, no, boo-boo. No, no, no. You be good or I'll have to put you down. Mama's on the video. Ron DeSantis just had this unbelievable response to Donald Trump. I'm not sure what this is. The battle lines continue to take shape in the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Uh, and most of the attention revolves around the two men most likely to win the nomination. Now, Ron DeSantis just had this unbelievable response to Donald Trump. During a press conference on Wednesday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis took issue with the fact that there was now a civil war in the Republican Party as everyone took sides over former President Donald Trump's campaign announcement. And there's pictures galore here, but they're not showing up. I don't know what's wrong with this computer. Um, my phone and my computer. Enough to drive you up the wall, let me tell you. Governor DeSantis ridiculed the idea of jumping ahead to 2024 when the 2022 midterms just wrapped up and there was a key Senate runoff race in Georgia on December 6th. We just finished this election, okay? DeSantis stated during a press conference, people just need to chill out a little bit on some of this stuff. Well, he sounds a little irritated. Boo-boo, no, no. I have to keep moving the mouse. And it's not your type of mouse. He likes it because I have uh, uh, psychedelic colors that run around the edge of the mouse. And he likes that. Uh, I mean, seriously, we just ran an election, he continued. We have this Georgia runoff coming, which is very important for Republicans to win that Georgia runoff. DeSantis, DeSantis then pivoted to comparing the red wave that swept over Florida to the disappointing national results. A comparison some interrupted as a jab at Trump, who tried to minimize DeSantis as an average governor in the days leading up to the midterm election. I mean, I know around the country, Florida was kind of the biggest bright spot, DeSantis added. It was not so bright in many other parts of the country. It was a substandard performance given the dynamics that are at play. Dynamics, yeah. Governor DeSantis uh, stated that in Florida, uh, he has taken, whoops, I'm sorry, taken on the left-wing special interests like the teachers, uh, unions, so-called public health experts, and the woke left-wing outrage mob, and won every single one of those fights leading to his landslide re-election. But I think what people like me, who have been given the opportunity to continue, is okay. Let's do something with that the governor said. And the reason why we won historic victory is Paisley, what are you doing? Uh, now Paisley jumped out of the chair. I'm so sorry. Oh, See what I go through? <laughs> okay. Uh, and let's do something with that, the governor said. And the reason why we won historic victory is at the end of the day, we lead. We delivered. And we had your back when you needed us. That is why we won big. If Ron DeSantis faces off against Donald Trump in the Republican presidential primary, both will compete to show Republican voters who's the most effective fighter for conservative values. I think those are two good men. Yes. Trump can get this world, or the United States of America, our world, back to where it should be. It's going to take time to undo everything that Biden has wrecked. And we all know that. But he's the man to do it. And DeSantis will back him. And they will fight together to put everything back the right way. And dissolve what Biden has done against us. Yes, boo-boo. Put your paw down, honey. Put your paw down. Uh, let's see, uh, Governor DeSantis recorded a victory and achievement is unmatched in the GOP at the state level. 
Yes. Now, I think that's probably the end of this. Yes. No, wait. A little more. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I got a lap full of cat here. Uh, Ron DeSantis is telling Republicans his record of fighting and winning. Okay, give me, give Mama a high five. Good boy. But that's the wrong foot, honey. I think. No, that's the right one. High five. Okay. He gives me high fives. He loves to do that. And Ron DeSantis is telling Republicans his record of fighting and winning is how the GOP can chart, chart a path back to power. Yes. Stay tuned to Conservative Underground News for any updates on this ongoing story. I will try to keep tabs on it. Yes, I sure will. All right. Yes, baby. I know, honey. You got your hand right there. Mommy's going to move the mouse. Yes. I'm going to say good night. Um, oh, he just jumped down. He got mad because I want to let him have the mouse. <laughs> Anyhow, God bless each and every one of you. God love my subscribers and my friends that just stop in to visit. Keep faith. I know that sounds so old, doesn't it? But you've got to do it. That's the only thing we've got left. But like I've said many times, I hate to see these next two years. What is going to happen? But we're going to hang in there. We've got to. And pray for Trump. Pray for DeSantis. And all the good people of the United States of America that want this country to survive. And get back to where it used to be. Before a lot of us aren't here to see it. We might see it flying around up above the world, you know, while we're flying around. Angels, <laughs> you know. But while I'm breathing, I want to see it back to normal. And I plan on keep breathing. You can count on that. God love you all. God bless you all. Give somebody a blessing. Because you have many blessings. God love you. Bye. No, I don't like goodbye. Remember that? I don't like goodbye. See you later.